Hey guys, I am here in Shanghai, China. We're actually hanging out in the lobby where a lot of media is staying and um, um, my new buddy Hans from Automotive News is here and I couldn't help myself but try to see if I can pick his brain and see if uh, he can give us some interesting insight looking from outside of the electric car bubble. Um, thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So um, we're here uh, for the CS Asia. We also attended the uh, Biden's unveiling of their sedan, the factory tour, and all of that stuff. Um, what are your thoughts so far? Well, I think the Biden part of the trip was very good. I mean, they, it seems like a real company. They, um, uh, they're really slick. They've thought it through very, very thoroughly. They've got a, a good management team. They've got the product. They have what they were calling the four uh, halves, right? They have got the uh, technology, they've got product, they've got capital, and they've got a factory, basically. So those are the four things that they say you need in China to have a startup uh, be materialized, and that's what they've got underway. Yeah, and so you specifically cover uh, uh, China and Asia in general for automotive news. Um, you know, um, it's uh, where I come from. In, in the United States, we always look at China as the market that's very, very friendly to uh, electric cars. And yet I got here and I don't see that many cars, electric cars on the streets. And I didn't see that much of a, a representation here at CES Asia compared to CES uh, in Vegas uh, in the beginning of the year. Uh, w w what's your view on, uh, you know, how well China is doing with, you know, promoting and pushing the uh, electric vehicles here? And uh, am I... Am Am I, am, and it, it, what I'm seeing is, is that the reality or am I mistaken? Well, you're right. I mean, by volume, China is the world's biggest electric car market uh, or electric, you know, new electric, uh, electric or new energy vehicle market. But uh, by proportion of the market, it's not anywhere near the top. I mean, Norway has a, a bigger penetration. Uh, Japan has a bigger penetration of at least electrified vehicles if you include hybrids. So the penetration rate here is actually pretty low. And uh, I came here a couple years ago, and I did I did a story about EVs, and we I interviewed a uh, professor at a at a university who drives a uh, a, a EV, and uh, this is a classic example of why it's hard to get penetration here. The only way he could charge it was at his home was to string a extension cord literally out his second uh, story window down to the parking lot to plug in a slow charge uh, because there's no place at his apartment to install or to have a, uh, a charging available. So he, basically when he does the fast charging, he has to do it all always at work, which works, but you see most people here live in these tenements with little if any parking and uh, it's, it's one obstacle. So, I mean, let's just talk about the rest of the world then. What do you see, uh, what, what do you think needs to happen in order for the rest of the world to start kind of considering electric cars as their next vehicle? Because right now, you know, we're about, you know, generally like what, an average 1%? Yeah, well, I think the first thing you need to have is gas prices go higher, right? That's going to be, a, I mean, the United States market especially is super sensitive to gasoline prices. So if they rise and start to go up, I think you'll see people start considering them more. Uh, that's a key thing. Uh, the other idea is just the range and the, the cost of the, the cars themselves. Has, uh, the range has to go up, the cost has to come down. I mean, that's underway, but it's kind of a, it's not going to be here tomorrow in that kind of, time frame, right? I think uh, at least in Japan, what the big automakers say is probably the, the aggressive ones like Nissan, for example, is predicting like a, a parity point of like around 2025 or something like that. So that's still quite a ways off. And um, I don't know. I mean, maybe public acceptance too is something that needs to get a little bit of traction because it's still kind of a, an unusual technology. Um, people uh, are worried about things like range, even though range for most, like, it's, it's a mental trick, really, because the, the average range that a, a, uh, a current EV delivers is good enough for daily driving, right? But there's, there's that mental trick that people have to get over that, 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 that cut that, that safety cord and learn that it, it can satisfy daily driving needs. Now, what do you think uh, companies like Tesla, you know, we're talking about even five years ago, uh, was able to succeed with very, even, you know, only a few superchargers of their own network that now grew, but at that time was really non-existent uh, and relatively high prices. And then they did the same thing here in China uh, where, you know, they started, you know, slow and, and the price is actually much higher, obviously, because of tariffs than the United States. Why do you think they were able to break through? 
Well, I don't know if they've actually broken through yet. I mean, they're kind of teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, right? If this Model 3 falls through or they can't get this off the ground, they're in deep trouble. And they, as far as I know, they still haven't turned a profit, right? Despite all, so I'm not sure that's a major breakthrough if they have a, a company that's money losing like that, right? Well, I, I mean, from where I stand, I, I, mean, I remember Amazon was losing money for like a decade. And they were just saying, hey, we're, you know, we're investing back in, back in our infrastructure, and they turned out to be pretty good from what mm -hmm. I've heard, right? So I think, like, f I think that's fine. Um, I, I think, uh, the, the, you know, and the obviously they don't have a problem with, like, you know, raising money. Last time, I think their securities uh, that they were, you know, trying to raise money with were, like, 14 times oversubscribed. Uh, but, um, y y you know, but I'm more, you know, you were talking about market acceptance. Why do you think people accept the Tesla? Uh, more than any other uh, maker. I don't know. I think Tesla has something a little bit special. It's almost like a uh, Apple-esque kind of aura to it, right? You've got a charismatic founder or CEO who is just different. I mean, he's you're buying into Elon Musk as much as you're buying into the product, right? Because it's kind of the whole aura of the brand. It's 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 a lifestyle, really, not just a product. So do you think the rest of the manufacturers just kind of need to catch up and make sure that it's kind of up to par with Tesla, almost like create another Android to an iPhone that's not necessarily better, but just almost as good and a little bit maybe on the same level? Or do you think there's more uh, innovation that needs to come from other manufacturers? Well, I don't know. I think what Tesla's doing is kind of special, right? I mean, it's like... Uh, it's not just the car, it's the whole attitude that comes with it, right? It's, it's the pioneer, it was the first out the door, it was, it's a sexy car, it's a kind of a fascinating, um, you know, uh, charismatic leader. And I don't think that, uh, even if you can replicate the car, I don't see any other companies out there right now that can replicate the, the experience that goes with that car, right? I mean, all the established motor companies, I don't know, maybe BMW has that's kind of cachet, but you still don't have the, the person behind it, the, the idea that you're buying into a brand brand new experience or something that's changing the world, right, uh, when, you, when you sign up with BMW. And I think that's part of the allure of, um, of Tesla. It's, it's interesting that you're saying that, that I'm thinking about. It. People do want a show nowadays, not just a good product, but also a show that comes along with it. Well, a little bit. I mean, I'm thinking about some of the other iconic cars like the VW Bug and stuff like that. There was like a lifestyle that goes with it. And Subaru is kind of on the same page, too. I don't know what it is about the Subarus, but people love Subarus because they think if I am driving a Subaru, it says something about me. I'm a little bit different from the rest of the crowd. I'm, I'm maybe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'm uh, well healed. I have a, a good income, but I don't need to have a fancy car to show off that I'm intelligent, I'm, I'm uh, an intellectual, that uh, I'm, I'm tech savvy and whatnot. Uh, because I, I think this is the best I've ever heard anybody describe a Subaru, including Subaru. <laughs> well, it has that kind of granola counterculture image, right? I mean, oh, it, I agree. And um, I don't know how it works for Subaru, to be quite honest, but it does. And, and Tesla has a similar vibe. It's got this kind of rabid following, just like Subaru does. And and the, like the Volkswagen Bug and uh, the Beetle, and I don't, I don't see. That's kind of magic. That's that's more art than science. And I don't see like if a Toyota or a BMW or even a Chevy or a General Motors comes along with a, their own equally, you know, on the spec sheet, par for you know equal status completely with the Model S or the Model Three. I don't know that they can replicate that extra magic that goes along with it. Now, uh, let's talk about what do you think is going to happen in five years? I mean, we know that, you know, their charging networks and infrastructures have been growing with Ionity in Europe, with uh, Electrify America in the United States. You know, sooner or later they're going to catch up. Uh, this year we have a lot of exciting cars that are coming up. And by exciting, I mean acceptable electric cars with over 200 mile range that look pretty good or at least don't look weird. Um, where do you think we're going to be in five years? Oh, I think we're going to be quite down the road in five years because China's really driving this whole trend, right? And that's why it's kind of important that we're here in China because the all automakers now are basically forced to develop uh, electric vehicles. Either either they are, are forced to start developing them or accelerate their programs that they already had just to feed China, basically, because of the because of the um, the mileage. Uh, regulations that come in and start to come in effect next year and then they become more stringent after that so they keep building and that's just going to put more pressure on 
all automakers if they want to participate in the world's biggest market to have EVs. And um, one way that they're going to spread out those costs is by taking those EVs to other markets to try to get economies of scale. So you're going to see probably this, you know, a rapid ramp up, I guess, probably around 2020. Uh, next generation batteries, you know, the improvement of this generation is always constantly ongoing, but the, even companies like Toyota, which is very conservative, is already talking about solid state batteries coming into play in the early 2020s. So if that comes to fruition, that could be, you know, a major breakthrough. I just interviewed Henry Fisker and he said he's going to be the first one to market. So it might be sooner rather than later. With, but a, with the solid state? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, saying basically... Uh, in a couple of years, though, he now is saying it's going to be a little bit of delay, but it s sounds like he's just done the first uh, 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 level of testing for the solid state and went very well. But he's talking about like a couple of years, which okay. I'm just saying there may yeah. be somebody else, but you're right, that's going to be a major breakthrough. Yeah. Um, I think Toyo said it, they're going to be first, but that's just their own timeline, which is, to me, rather amazing. I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely going to change pretty much everything, I would say. Um, uh, now, who do you think, if anybody, will be that competitor to Tesla that will first reach their sort of level of, you know, break it down into either car quality or infrastructure or the showmanship? Boy, that's a hard one. I I, I don't know. It's still a niche product, really. Uh, and we'll see how the Model 3 goes. Model 3 quality has a lot of problems and the production isn't great. Um, so that could be a, a big stumbling block. And we'll, we'll see. I don't think it's going to turn off the true believers because they're like in locked into Tesla no matter what, right? But we'll see how, it, you know, what its uh, capture rate is on other other markets. Uh, who can compete with that? I, I don't know. I can I see lots of people competing in as in electric vehicles. I don't know if anybody's going to be taking that niche role away from from Tesla. I mean, it's just kind of that's its brand image. It's wrapped up in that, and other companies will have to find space around Tesla, right? I mean, not everybody can afford a Tesla, um, so there will be other white space around it. Or maybe people don't like Tesla. There's like people who are like turned off by it, you know, just like people don't like Apple because it's Apple, you know. <laughs> and uh, me, yeah, for example. So there's probably lots of people who don't like Tesla just because it's Tesla, and they want something different. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, there's plenty of white space around there to play. You know, now that, that I think about it, I think it might be Nissan. You know why, actually? Uh, I, when I was uh, flying out of SFO to here, uh, I walked by uh, an ad, you know, like one of those ads that, like, on the on the side of the wall, and it was Nissan advertising in the Nissan Leaf, and I, I realized that they're the only ones who are actually publicly advertising their, their uh, all-electric car. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they've started before almost everybody, at least this time around. Um, and they're a big manufacturer with a lot of money and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I think that that might be them, at least right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't think it has the pizzazz. I don't think uh, you ask who, who is the, uh, the CEO of Nissan. Nobody knows. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it lacks a lot of, a lot, a lot of the extra uh, benefits that come with the Tesla package. But... It could be. I mean, the, the EVs are central to the Nissan strategy, the, the corporate strategy from here on out, so maybe. Maybe they'll hire a celebrity or something, but we'll, we'll see. This is just a guess. I mean, I just kind of dawned on me just as I was flying out of here. But uh, listen, I can talk to you all day, obviously. Uh, um, tell, tell everybody where they can read your stuff uh, uh, in Automotive sure, sure, News. Sure. Well, I'm at uh, Automotive News. Uh, it's a weekly publication that comes out of Detroit. I'm the Asia editor. I'm based in Tokyo. I cover all of Asia. You can read uh, us on the web at autonews.com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Um, just uh, yet another day here at CS Asia in uh, Shanghai, China. I will uh, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.